Remember this, alignment accesses authority. Alignment accesses authority. I spoke about this recently. I used this analogy, but I'll use it again because I think it applies here. Imagine I get pulled over. The best thing for me to do, the wise thing for me to do, if I get pulled over by a police officer, is just do what he asks. Keep my hand on the steering wheel. He wants my driver's license, hand it to him. Now, if he's a good cop, he's just gonna act according to the law. If he's trying to hassle me, okay. For the time being, I'll go along with it and then maybe bring a lawsuit later if that's the case. <laughs> but that's a whole different story. But you know, when the officer pulls me over, he's acting in accordance with the law. Now we know most police officers are good people. So for the most part, I'm just gonna go along with it. I, I, I trust that he's acting within authority. Now imagine this same police officer, imagine he's not wearing his badge. He's off the clock. He comes to my house, knocks on my door and demands that I give him all my furniture or demands that I give him all the cash I have in the house or demands that he be allowed to use my house like his own personal Airbnb. All right, if he did that, then I could turn him away and say, what are you doing? Like, I'm gonna call the cops on you. Why? Because he's acting outside of his authority. When an officer is acting within the law, he has the authority to act. But the moment he breaks away from the law, there's consequence. In the same way, you and I as believers have the authority so long as we act within the word. So then, there is power in praying the word. Remember this, if God promises it, you can pray for it. If God promises it, you can pray for it. When God speaks a promise, that's mine to claim. And I claim it not according to my own creative power, I claim it according to his faithfulness, knowing that he'll stand by his word. Now, again, for example, like with healing, okay, we claim the promises of healing, which are clearly laid out in scripture. What happens if it doesn't manifest like we think it should and when it should? That's when you trust in the sovereignty of God, but still pray persistently. And as I said, I'd rather pray the rest of my life for that healing. Then stop praying prematurely when the miracle would have happened. Pray every day like the miracle could happen. And if it doesn't happen by the end of that day, thank him that the miracle's coming tomorrow. That's the state of faith. Don't grow discouraged, but pray persistently. Now, as we align ourselves with the authority of God's word, as we align ourselves with heaven's backing, that's where we see the real power. You see, some of us are praying prayers out of selfish ambition. Some of us are praying things that God never willed for our lives. Some of us are praying for God to bless us in areas he never wanted us to step. Some of us are praying for God to open a door that he himself locked. Wow. Think about that. Some of us are praying for God to open a door that he himself locked. And then we push and we plead, not realizing that we are trying to pray against God's sovereignty, which never works. Hmm. But if he promised it, we can pray it. Now watch this, John chapter 15, verse seven. Listen to what he says. This is for sure, 100%, you can count on this. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask me for anything you want and it will be granted. What a promise. But what does it mean? If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. Well, I got a question for you. Think about this. Here's my question. What happens when his word remains in you? What happens when his word remains in you? I'll tell you. When his word abides in you, you begin to become transformed. Your desires begin to change. Your cravings begin to change. Your habits begin to change. Your thinking begins to change. So if his word abides in me, then I begin to become transformed in my desires. And what begins to happen? I begin to pray what he wants. And it's in praying what he wants that causes it to be granted. Mm -hmm. I can't just pray whatever I will, whatever I want. That's immature. But when I align myself with his word, what he's promised, then I begin to see the manifestation of those prayers. What does it mean now to remain in me? 
or abide in me. Now, this is important because here's the condition he laid out. If you remain in me, that's the condition. So if we want the result, we have to meet the condition. So what does that mean? If you remain in me? Well, 1 John 3, 24 says this, whoever keeps his commandments remains in God and God in him. By this, we know that he remains in us by the spirit he has given us. So it is in living according to the word it's living in righteousness that we find ourselves aligned with God's word. 1 John 3, 21 through 22. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Hmm. You want to see your prayers answered? Start living right. Come on. Start aligning your life with the word of God and you will begin to see that your prayers change. Your will becomes one with his. And the moment you align with heaven, you have heaven's backing. Alignment brings access to authority. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.